This was supposed to be Germany's answer to modern architectural ambition, a 245-meter glass and steel giant that would crown Hamburg's skyline and stand as the country's third tallest building. But today, what was meant to be a symbol of German engineering excellence has become something else entirely. A half-finished concrete monument to spectacular failure that's literally dragging the ground around it down with it. Welcome to Hamburg's Elp Tower, a $600 million construction nightmare that's been slowly sinking into the earth since the day they started building it. The story begins in 2018, when Hamburg's then mayor Olaf Scholz, yes, the same Olaf Scholz who's now Germany's chancellor, unveiled plans for what would become Hamburg's architectural crown jewel. The Elp Tower, designed by renowned British architect David Chipperfield, promised to transform the city skyline forever. The numbers were staggering. At 245 meters tall, with 64 floors and 104,000 square meters of floor space, this would be a massive mixed-use complex destined to house 5,000 workers across luxury hotels, restaurants, observation decks, and cutting-edge office space. The initial budget, a hefty 700 million euros, roughly $600 million. But here's where the first red flags should have been flying. The chosen location was a triangular plot right next to Hamburg's critical Elbbrücken railway bridges at the convergence of the River Elbe and Oberhafen Canal. Centuries of river sediment had created what engineers politely call problematic soil conditions. Think about that for a moment. They decided to build Germany's third tallest building on what's essentially a pile of river mud next to some of the country's most important railway infrastructure. What could possibly go wrong? From day one, engineers knew they were dealing with challenging ground conditions. Foundation work required drilling over 70 meters deep, deeper than a 20-story building is tall, to find stable ground. Most German skyscrapers need foundations of 20 to 30 meters. The Elp Tower needed more than double that, and even then, engineers weren't confident they'd reached solid footing. As the massive concrete structure rose from the ground, something predictable yet catastrophic started happening. The sheer weight began causing settlement, a polite term for the ground slowly giving way under enormous load. The Deutsche Bahn, Germany's national railway, had been watching with growing alarm. In internal documents, railway engineers warned the structure could cause significant impacts on railway installations and make safe railway operation impossible. Their fears proved founded. As the concrete shell reached 100 meters, less than half its intended height, settlement effects exceeded safety limits. The nearby S-Bahn station Elbrücken, serving thousands of daily commuters, began showing structural stress. The most damning evidence came in December 2024, when Hamburg's building authority acknowledged that established limit values for settlements had been exceeded. These aren't guidelines, they're hard limits preventing catastrophic failure. The railway infrastructure began sinking so significantly that parts of the Elbrücken railway bridge had to be replaced in 2024, with more extensive repairs planned. One of Hamburg's most vital transportation arteries was being compromised by an unfinished building. If settlement problems weren't enough, financial disaster struck in October 2023. René Benko's Signa Group, the Austrian empire funding this project, imploded spectacularly. Benko, once one of Europe's most prominent real estate investors, faced bankruptcy across multiple countries. His company owed construction firm Lup over 37 million euros, with no money to continue. Workers packed up and left, abandoning a 100-meter concrete shell now standing like a monument to hubris. With settlement issues mounting and railway infrastructure compromised, the sudden halt meant engineers couldn't implement planned compensation measures. The building was left in engineering limbo, too heavy to ignore, too problematic to complete. Benko now sits in an Austrian jail facing fraud charges. His empire, 
once controlling billions in assets, has collapsed entirely. The Elp Tower is just one casualty among dozens of failed projects scattered across Europe. But here's what makes this truly extraordinary. The problems didn't stop when construction halted. The frozen 100-metre concrete shell continues exerting enormous pressure on surrounding ground, like a giant weight permanently pressing on Germany's critical infrastructure. Hamburg's building authority decreed construction cannot resume until settlement consequences are eliminated through suitable compensation measures. Any future investor must spend tens of millions repairing railway damage before even thinking about continuing upward. Meanwhile, Deutsche Bahn faces an ongoing maintenance nightmare, continuously monitoring infrastructure slowly pushed out of alignment by a building that may never be completed. Despite these challenges, Hamburg isn't giving up. In late 2024, Hamburg-based developer Dieter Becken signed an exclusive agreement to potentially take over the stalled tower. The city also proposed buying nearly half the building for 595 million euros to house a natural history museum. But there's a catch. The revised plan shrinks the tower from 245 metres to just 199 metres, eliminating 12 floors to reduce foundation load. This amounts to admitting the original vision was fundamentally flawed. Even architect David Chipperfield had to completely revise his plans. The Elp Tower isn't alone. Across Europe, ambitious megaprojects face similar problems as cities build bigger without accounting for local conditions. Germany, with its engineering reputation, was supposed to be immune to spectacular failures. Instead, Hamburg joined the ranks of cities dealing with construction nightmares. The irony is sharp, given this was Scholz's pet project. The man who now leads Germany as Chancellor championed the Elp Tower as a symbol of ambitious future. Instead, it's known locally as the Kurzer Olaf, short Olaf, referencing both the building's stunted height and the man who promoted it. Beckens Consortium claims they can complete the project by 2029, but they face a daunting list. First, solve settlement problems and repair railway infrastructure, costing tens of millions before resuming construction. Then question whether a shorter, less ambitious building can generate enough revenue to justify the investment. Meanwhile, railway problems continue mounting. Every month without proper compensation means more infrastructure wear, higher maintenance costs and growing pressure from federal authorities for permanent solutions. The Elbe Tower offers brutal lessons about mega-project management. Location is everything. No amount of engineering can overcome fundamental site challenges next to critical infrastructure. Financial stability in massive construction projects cannot be overstated. When political projects become symbols of achievement, there's pressure to push forward despite flashing warning signs. But perhaps most importantly, it's about limits of ambition in an era of environmental and technical constraints. The push to build taller and more impressive must balance local conditions, infrastructure capacity and long-term sustainability. So what's the verdict on Germany's $600 million sinking tower? It remains one of Europe's most expensive construction failures, a half-finished shell causing ongoing infrastructure damage while its future hangs in limbo. Even if completed, final costs will likely exceed 1.2 billion euros, factoring in railway repairs, delays and design modifications. That's double the original budget for a significantly smaller building than planned. The Elp Tower has achieved fame, but not as intended. Instead of architectural triumph, it's become a cautionary tale studied worldwide. A reminder that ambition without proper foundation, literally and figuratively, leads to spectacular failure. Somewhere in Hamburg, the ghost of future construction projects watches as the Elp Tower sits frozen at 100 meters, slowly pulling down everything around it. A concrete monument to the eternal truth that sometimes, dreams become nightmares if you're not careful where you build them. What do you think? Could the Elp Tower still be salvaged, 
Or should Hamburg cut its losses and find a way to safely demolish this expensive mistake? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.